Hi there, and welcome to our podcast. And this week at London Visited, we go to Selfridges Department Store on Oxford Street to tell you all about this iconic part of London. My name's Steve, and each week I'm going to bring to you the facts, history and information about different parts of this great capital. If you've been to London, are planning on visiting, love here, or just love London from afar, then this is the podcast for you. Don't forget to visit our YouTube channel, London Visited, to see videos covering this place and so many others across London that we're adding to each week. And now to this week's podcast. Selfridges, also known as Selfridges & Co, is a chain of high-end department stores in the UK that is operated by the Canadian group Selfridges Retail Limited, part of the Selfridges group of department stores. It was founded by Harry Gordon Selfridge in 1908. The flagship store on London's Oxford Street is the second largest shop in the UK, after Harrods. There is a previous podcast on that, and it opened on the 15th of March, 1909. Other Selfridges stores opened in the UK are two in Manchester and one in Birmingham. The basis of Harry Gordon Selfridges' success was his relentlessly innovative marketing, which was elaborately exposed in his Oxford Street store. Originally from America himself, Selfridge attempted to dismantle the idea that consumerism was strictly an American phenomenon. He tried to make shopping a fun adventure and a form of leisure instead of a chore transforming the department store into a social and cultural landmark that provided women with a public space in which they could be comfortable and legitimately indulge themselves. Emphasising the importance of creating a welcoming environment, he placed merchandise on display so that customers could examine it, move the highly profitable perfume counter front and centre on the ground floor, and establish policies that made it safe and easy for customers to shop. These techniques have been adopted by modern department stores now around the world. Either Selfridge or Marshall Field is popularly held to have coined the phrase the customer is always right, and Selfridge used it regularly in his advertising. Selfridge attracted shoppers with educational and scientific exhibits and was himself interested in education and science, believing that the displays would introduce potential new customers to Selfridges and thus generate both immediate and long-term sales. In 1909, the first cross-channel flight, Louis Blaiross monoplane, was put on display at Selfridges, where it was seen by 12,000 people. John Logie Baird made the first public demonstration of moving silhouette images by television from the first floor of Selfridges, from the 1st to the 27th of April, 1925. In the 1920s and 30s, the roof of the store hosted terrace gardens, cafes, a mini golf course, and an all-girl gun club. The roof, with its extensive views across London, was a common place for a strolling after a shopping trip, and was often used for fashion shows. During the Second World War, the store's basement was used as an air raid shelter, and during raids, employees were usually on the lookout for incendiary bombs and took watch in turns. A Milne Shaw seismograph was set up on the Selfridges in Oxford Street, third floor, in 1932, attached to one of the building's main stanchions, where it remained unaffected by traffic or shoppers. It successfully recorded the Belgian earthquake of the 11th of June, 1938, which was also felt in London. In 1947, it was given to the British Museum. The huge Sig Sally scrambling apparatus, by which transatlantic conferences between American and British officials, most notably Winston Churchill and Franklin D. Roosevelt, were secured against eavesdropping, was housed in the basement from 1943 on, with extension to the cabinet war rooms about a mile away. In 1926, Selfridges set up the Selfridge Provincial Stores Company, which had expanded over the years to include 16 provincial stores, but these were sold to the John Lewis Partnership in 1940. The Liverpool-based Lewis's chain of department stores acquiring the remaining Oxford Street shop in 1951, until it was taken over in 1965 by the Sears Group, owned by Charles Claw. Under the Sears Group, branches in Ilford and Oxford opened, with the latter remaining Selfridges until 1986, when Sears rebranded it as a Lewis's store. In 1990, Sears Holdings split Selfridges from Lewis's and placed Lewis's in administration a year later. In March 1998, Selfridges acquired its current logo in tandem with the opening of the Manchester Trafford Centre store and Selfridges' demerger from Sears. Hi there, and thanks so much for listening to this podcast on the history of London. And if you're enjoying this, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Now, if you want to get more involved with London Visited, don't forget you can join us as a member by going to patreon.com forward slash London Visited with so many different benefits. Or you could purchase a 4K photograph of London from our website, 
londonvisited.co.uk, both of which support us and keep the channel going. Once again, thanks for listening. And now, back to the podcast. In 2003, the chain was acquired by Canada's Gallon Western for £598 million and became part of the Selfridges Group, which also includes Brown Thomas and Arnott's in Ireland, Holt Renfrew in Canada, and Birkenkoff in the Netherlands. Western, a retailing expert who is also the owner of major supermarket chains in Canada, has chosen to invest in the renovation of the Oxford Street store, rather than create new stores in British cities other than Manchester and Birmingham. In October 2009, Selfridges revived its rooftop entertainment with the opening of the Restaurant on the Roof. In 2012, the big rooftop tea and golf party featured the highest afternoon tea on Oxford Street and a nine-hole golf course with seven wonders of London, realised in cakes as obstacles. Last month, in August 2020, during a difficult time for UK retail, Selfridges offered luxury pieces for hire to millennial and society-conscious clients. The store partnered with Her, an online fashion rental platform, offering hire of 100 items from over 40 fashion brands for up to 20 days at a time. The Selfridges stores are known for their architectural innovation and excellence, and are tourist destinations in their own right. The original London store was designed by Daniel Burnham, who also created the Marshall Fields main store in his hometown of Chicago. Burnham was also the leading American department store designer of the time and had works in Boston, New York and Philadelphia. The London store was built in phases. The first phase consisted of only nine and a half bays, closest to Duke Street corner. And this is an example of one of the earliest uses of steel cage frame construction for this type of building in London. In 2010, the Daily Telegraph named Selfridges in London the best department store in the world. Selfridges windows have become synonymous also with the brand and to a certain degree have become as famous as the company and the Oxford Street location. Selfridges has a history of bold art initiatives when it comes to window designs. Selfridge himself likened the act of shopping to the act of attending the theatre and encouraging his customers to make this connection as well by covering his show windows with silk curtains before dramatically unveiling the displays on opening day. Just as they do today, the window designers served as the opening act of the entire play of the Selfridge experience and helped capture the public's attention to transform customers into true shoppers. Later, when the building was undergoing restoration, the scaffolding was shrouded with giant photographs of stars such as Sir Elton John by Sam Taylor Wood. The windows consistently attract tourists, designers and fashionistas alike to marvel at the current designs and styling and fashion trends. The long-lasting influence that Harry Selfridge would have on shopping and department stores became immediately clear with Selfridge's opening day. The store's opening to much fanfare on the 15th of March 1909 laid the foundation for the success of the entire lifestyle that Selfridge aimed to promote. Even before the unveiling of the window displays, innovative marketing techniques set up the momentous occasion and the store for a great success. Harry Selfridge developed close relationships with the media to ensure that his store and its opening were properly publicised. The opening week ad campaign relied mainly on unpaid promotions in the form of news articles in newspapers, magazines and journals. As time progressed, Selfridge took the more traditional form of marketing by writing daily columns under the pen name Callisthenus. Overall, however, one of the most effective marketing tools proved to be the opening week cartoons focusing on the grand event. Selfridge enlisted the help of 38 of London's top illustrators to draw hundreds of full-page, half-page and quarter-page advertisements for 18 newspapers. This innovative combination of direct advertisements and newspaper publicities proved to be quite effective at drawing the crowds to the store. The marketing continued on the opening day. Touted as London's greatest store, Selfridges immediately became a cultural and social phenomenon. From the store's soft lighting, to the general absence of price tags, to live music from string quartets, every detail of the opening was purposeful to draw people into the entire shopping experience and make each shopper feel unique. At Selfridges, shoppers entered another world in which they became guests, as the store referred to them, and could purchase unique items that differed from the material goods sold in other stores. The successes of the marketing campaign and the store's opening day highlight that Selfridges sold an entire lifestyle, not just an impressive array of material goods. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed our in-depth look at Selfridges. 
Whatever podcast service you use to listen to this, please do subscribe to get updates on new shows and also please leave us some feedback. Please also let me know any places you'd like us to feature in future podcasts and let me know through our website www.londonvisited.co.uk or you can email me directly on londonvisited at gmail.com. Alternatively, you can contact us on Twitter and Instagram on at London Visited or Facebook on at The London Visited. Thanks for listening. Can't wait to bring you next week's one, which is a request from someone that listens regularly. So we'll see you on that one and really hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. See you soon.